I just woke up. It's very, very early in the morning. Um, I'm trying to catch up on the fights. Allergies is kicking in, so pardon my voice and everything. But uh, I just saw the fight between Gawaski and Cunningham. And uh, very great fight. You know, I told you guys it was going to be a great fight. I did a prediction video last minute. Uh, one of the subscribers asked me to do this video, and I did it last minute. I had never seen Gawaski fight before the Huck fight, all right? I've only seen that fight. I picked Cunningham based off just what I saw with Gawaski. Good fighter, very good fighter. But he looked more impressive in this fight. He showed his boxing skills more in this fight with Cunningham than he did with Huck. Seemed like with Huck, he kind of went to war with him, where in this fight, he was fighting more on his back foot. Timing was great. Counter punching was great. All right. He just, he just, he's technically more sound than Cunningham in this fight. All right. So, um, I wish I had, you know what? I'm probably going to get, you know, the next time I talk about this guy, or then, you know what? When I have some free time, Probably going to go back and look at some of his older fights because he's probably shown this type of skill. It's just that I've never seen him fight before the hook. And one of the subscribers asked me to do a prediction video, and I did a quick one, and I picked Cunningham. You know, I thought Cunningham, you know, was going to use his height and his reach. You know, he has good boxing skills. It's just that he's he reminds me of Tim Bradley. You know, his heart can take over this the fight. You know, for a guy that's almost 40, his his work rate is pretty good. You know, and everything. But the guy likes to trade, you know, when he gets hurt or when he gets clipped with a good shot. He wants to go to war. He wants to show you that he's not hurt. He reminds me of Tim Bradley. Good boxers. Both of them are very good boxers. But they love to trade when they, even when they don't have to. Um, now, let's, let's, let's talk about the fight. First round, I noticed that Steve wasn't really throwing any jabs like I thought he would. I thought he was too close, and he was too close. He was always in range to get countered by uh, Glowoski. Uh, you know, Cunningham just didn't use the height and reach advantage at all. He had like a seven-inch reach advantage, and he wasn't using it. He was always in range to get hit with a good shot. All right, and this is where we learned that Glowoski had a sharp, straight left hand. I mean, I've seen him even in a hook fight he did, but in a hook fight he was more, more so going to war with hook, all right? Where in this fight, he was a lot more technical, you know, doing throwing more counters and everything. So I noticed in the first round that Cunningham came out, won in the trade, and he paid for it in the second round. Okay, in the second round, he got hit with a good left hand, all right, uh, got dropped. And he gave him the second knockdown. I mean... There was no reason why he should have got knocked down in the second round, uh, uh, for the second time in that round. Okay, he gets back up, and, you know, instead of relaxing, he goes in there, try to prove that he's not hurt, throws a right hand, lands it, but it wasn't clean, okay? He throws a big right hand, didn't land clean. He saw the counter coming. If you watch it in slow motion, you would see that the counter, he was preparing for the left counter, and he tried to guard himself and if you look at his legs his legs were still weak Gawaski barely hit him barely hit him and this guy fell backwards that was, that was a knockdown he just gave away because he didn't want to relax for a guy that's, that's almost 40 years old he's about to turn 40 years old I mean the guy brings a great fight but you know he's still very athletic and everything but I mean he has to smarten up man Steve Cunningham you know a lot of these fights, he's always in close fights. You know, he never really gets blown out, right? He he rarely ever gets blown out. But there's fights like this at this at this stage of the game at his age. He can't fight an unintelligent fights like that. You know, I mean, it was a great show. I love the fight. Fight was a great fight. If you look at it, if you look on box rec and see that he got knocked down four times, you would think he got dominated. There was a lot of swing rounds throughout that fight, all right? Especially midway through the fight, five, six, seven. All those rounds in the middle, outside of the two knockdowns that came late, there was a lot of swing swing rounds in those um, those rounds, okay? So, um, you know, he did a good job. But anyway, moving on. So, you know, the first few rounds, Cunningham didn't really look good to me. Um, and he was trying to trade. I noticed, and the one complaint I have with Glowoski that I noticed in the second fight in a row, 
he comes out. He actually has fast hands, right? Uh, reminds me of Spilka. Reminds me exactly like Spilka. Very, very similar, these two guys, all right? Especially in this fight. The thing with Glowoski is that he has fast hands, comes out with fast hands, even with the hook fight, slows down dramatically. He's not as fast, and that could be an issue if he fights somebody that comes with a, a you know, like... He could have lost a hook fight if he didn't knock him out. He could have lost that fight. You know, a guy that's going to work more and outwork him and not get dropped, you know, might be able to beat him. You know, him and Hook should fight in a rematch eventually. You know, they should have a rematch for sure. But um, he slowed down, but his timing was still on point. His counters, that counter uppercut uh, that, he would, that, that, that he would go to the body with, was was very he was very on point with that counter left on uppercut to the body throughout the whole night okay whenever he threw it he seemed to land it every single time even his right hook he timed steve great all night all right steve got his good shots in too you know especially midway later in the fight he was definitely stepping up the, the aggression the pressure but gawaski's timing and his counter punch abil ability was just too good all right and I think overall, Glowoski landed the better, more clean punches, the harder punches as well, okay? Um, there was a knockdown. The third knockdown, I believe, was in either in the 10th round or the 11th round. I think it was in the 10th round when he dropped Cunningham again. Oh, I can't remember what kind of punch it was, but uh, right after Cunningham gave, got up, he landed a big right hand that actually wobbled uh, Glowoski. And hurt him, but he didn't, you know, he didn't really do anything after that. I mean, that was the best punch of the fight as far as Cunningham. But, oh, you know what? I wanted to talk about that one punch. Uh, I don't know if it was the third or fourth knockdown, but it was the right hand that kind of looked like an elbow. And I don't think it was an elbow at all. I thought it was a short right hook. It came so quick. It was so short and quick. And... Cunningham got clipped with it, didn't see it coming, and he fell down. I think the forearm part is that he did a, a little push-off, but the punch itself is what actually hurt Cunningham, okay? It wasn't the forearm. I know BJ Flores and, 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 and uh, Cunningham are real cool. I know they've known each other for a very long time, but uh, BJ Flores was definitely, definitely, you know, rooting for Cunningham. You could tell in the commentary a little bit. That he favored, he was a little biased towards um, Cunningham a little bit, but that was definitely not a, a push or a forearm or elbow or anything. All right, it was the right hook. It was so short and quick. Somebody else got dropped recently with a hook like that. I can't remember in the fight, but it was so short and quick that Cunningham didn't even see it coming. All right, and it was a counter as, as well. And he got dropped by it, you know. And I think the forearm came where he was just trying to push him off, but it wasn't hard. Like he barely touched him with the forearm all right and Cunningham was already going down at that point in my opinion all right um but it was a very good fight Cunningham showed a lot of heart like you know he fought with a sense of urgency at the end of the last few rounds you know he got knocked down you know he showed a lot a lot of heart and the fight was really really good really competitive fight Cunningham is always going to bring a great fight you know even at his age he's still you know I said all of this earlier in the video but it just wasn't enough. Glowoski was the better boxer that night. He was just a harder puncher. And he proved to me that, you know, I, I should go back and watch his other fights because he, he's a good boxer. He's a pretty good boxer, right? But um, great fight, you know, from what I'm hearing, it was fighting the night. And um, I'm going to watch the other videos. I'm going to watch some Marcus Brown. I heard about Marcus Brown. I heard, you know, everybody was killing him on Twitter last night. I didn't see the fight. But I heard that there was a robbery last night. And um, I'm going to do a, a, a breakdown of the Errol Spence fight as well, all right? So be on the lookout for those videos. I'm just going to watch those fights now and upload them. And make sure you guys subscribe and just be on the lookout for the other videos, all right?